All right, it's an andouille extravaganza today. We got one ingredient, andouille sausage, and we're making it two ways. And my man Beef here from South Carolina by way of Michigan. Michigan, correct. Right? You got, uh, now you got some collard greens here, man. Right. You got some collard greens, you have shri the shrimp's going in with the... With the sauce here, with sausage. The, yes. Okay, that looks amazing, by the way. And then you have grits. Right. <laughs> What I've done is I've taken some uh, seafood seasoning, some Old Bay seasoning. It's got paprika, peppers in it. It's got a number of flavors, all spice. Right. We're going to sprinkle a little bit more on this side. So you spice rub the grits. We spri spice rub the grits. Now, what that's going to do is it's going to help prevent it from sticking. Uh -huh. And also, it's going to give it some beautiful grill marks. Yeah, it's gonna, and it's going to give it a nice crust on the Yes, inside. a nice crust on there. That's inside. a great idea. I love that. I'm gonna finish up my andouille broth with a whole bunch of uh, freshly chopped Italian parsley. And then I'm just gonna kind of fold the parsley right into this. Now, if you wanted to, you could just kind of serve it right in, right in the pot on the table. I mean, that'd be totally fine, too. Okay, and then I'm gonna take some of my bread, my grilled bread with the anchovy butter, put this in our bowl and a garnish. There you go. How you doing there, Beef? We're doing good. What we're doing is we're going to flip the uh, grits right now. You can see how that uh, seasoning gave it a gr real good grill mark. Oh, that looks great. We've added the shrimp to the uh, the main dish there, and we threw in some uh, some scallions, and we're letting that uh, finish up. It's only going to take about five minutes with the shrimp. Now, the one thing I was going to ask you, yep. I threw the shrimp directly in there. Right. My fear was is that if I grilled them, then threw them in there, that I was going to overcook them. Would I have overcooked them or not? Well, I kind of did sort of the same thing, where I, I just grilled the shrimp slightly mm -hmm. about halfway through, and then I kind of finished it in the broth. But either way, it's going to work. Maybe next time I'll try it. But it's a, it's a good concern to have. You don't want to overcook the shrimp. I mean, right. that's really the key to it. But to me, this looks like Carolina on a grill. I'm going to actually make a salad to go along with this. And uh, I'm going to use some frise, which is uh, basically a white chicory. So it has sort of a peppery flavor to it. So I'm going to take some roasted garlic, some red wine vinegar, a little bit of red onion, some fresh lime juice, some Dijon mustard. So I'm going to put some salt and pepper in here and a little bit of honey. And we're going to start blending this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use canola oil to start. And then I'm going to finish it with a little extra virgin olive oil. So the vinaigrette stays nice and light, but it's topped off with that delicious flavor of the extra virgin olive oil. Let's give it a taste. That's actually pretty good. I'm ready to go. What do you got there? I have collard greens. Collard greens. Now, did you blanch these first? Yes, I did. I just take uh, a couple strips of raw bacon, throw it right. in with the boiling water. Just throw them in there for a minute or two. Yeah, because, you know, I've never grilled co collard greens, but I got to tell you something. Yeah. I'm a huge collard green fan, so I'm looking forward to well, this. Well, the, the pork fat is important because what it's going to do is when you, once, you, once you stick it in the ice water and cool them down, it's going to let that pork fat adhere to the collard green, and that way it won't stick to the grill. All right. So now I'm going to take my, uh, my frise. With frise, or the white chicory, the white is really the best part. It's the most tender part and it has the most crunch to it. So we're just gonna take some of our greens, all right, and then some thinly sliced red onion. And now I'm gonna take some dressing, I'm gonna pour it around the sides of the bowl because I don't wanna drown the lettuces in the dressing. We're just gonna push the greens into the dressing just so it picks up a little bit of the dressing, okay? And then I'm gonna take some Parmesan cheese and just make very thin slices of the Parmesan just right onto the plate. And that's our salad. Give this a try. There you go. What do you think? Just andouille sausage. It's so nice and tender. Yeah. In there with that clam juice and the mussels and the anchovies. It just, it all ties together. And I, I just can't imagine this all coming together like it did. And, well, and it just explodes in your mouth. And that anchovy butter is just to die for. I mean, it's just, it's excellent. Yours looks amazing. So talk to me about what we got here. At the base, we did grilled collard greens. And then we have the grit cake underneath there that we grilled and it's got the nice grill marks there. And then the andouille, which of course, we can't forget, that's our big ingredient today. Right, right, right. This is delicious. Well, I mean, I'm glad you like absolutely, it. Absolutely. The thing I love about this is that it's got so much flavor to it, but you can taste each individual ingredient. You're not, nothing is getting blown out of the water. Right. You know, it's so nice. This well, I, really... I go by what you always tell me, which is use ingredients with impact. Okay, Andouille is lighting the fire here at Grilla today, but coming up, I have a revolutionary way to make a Bloody Mary. And we don't forget, we have our Michigan cherries and peaches. Beef, you're gonna hook it up, right? I'm gonna hook it up. Can beef do cherries? We'll find out. Stay tuned.
Okay, what's the best way to top off a couple of delicious andouille dishes, dessert, and a couple of cocktails? All right, Beef, what do you got? Okay, what, what we're going to do here is we're going to go back to incorporating that whole Michigan, South Carolina thing. So okay. what we're going to do is we're going to grill some peaches. Yes. And we're going to take that Michigan cherry sauce, and we're going to drizzle that over the top with a little bit of ice cream and a couple wafers. We've got some uh, butter and some brown sugar. And all we're going to do is we're just going to coat the peaches and throw them on the grill. All right, so you really want to get them nicely caramelized. Yeah, just get your hands dirty. So in the food process, you just have some cherries? I have cherries, I have balsamic vinegar, and I have that port oh, wine. Okay, I love that. So you bring in a little vinegar, but a sweet a sweet vinegar to, to kind of bring up the cherry flavor. Right. And the, and the port, all those flavors go really well right. together. I love that. I'll keep an eye on your peaches. We're going to glaze the cherry sauce and a butter brown sugar glaze. I'm going to actually start on my cocktail. We're doing sort of a reverse Bloody Mary. What we're going to do is we're going to make ice cubes out of, the, out of the tomato juice and all the spices. We're going to take a whole bunch of tomato juice, all right, some Worcestershire sauce, some hot sauce, some horseradish, and put a lot of, I love horseradish, put a lot in, and a touch of celery salt, or celery seed, I should say. We're just going to mix this all up. And I'm just gonna put a touch of water in here just to thin out the tomato juice a little bit. Now remember, this doesn't have the vodka in it. So you're looking for a nice, mm, that's good, a nice spicy tomato juice. Then we can take our ice cube trays and just pour it in. Bobby, I've never seen that before. It's actually a pretty cool idea. I mean, I like doing things that, like, like reverse ideas of classic dishes and stuff, you know? You kind of deconstruct it a little bit. Pretty cool. It's a cool idea. I have some here that I made a little ahead of time. Pretty cool. But what I'm gonna do is actually put them in a shaker, and I'm just gonna throw some vodka over this, and I'm just gonna give this a quick shake, and the, and the ice cubes will break up just a little bit, and it'll start to flavor the vodka. As the ice cubes melt, you're gonna get more and more of that Bloody Mary flavor. We're gonna take a, uh, a sweet tea vodka made right on the outskirts of Charleston, South Carolina, a little place called Watamala Island. And all you're gonna do is just simply take a little bit of lemonade. And to incorporate the Michigan flair, we're just gonna throw a little bit of cherry juice in there. Looks good. All right, how do you, how do you dessert coming? Good. Dessert's coming fine. We're ready to plate these peaches. What can I do? Can I scoop yeah, some ice cream? Go ahead, put a scoop of ice cream on each one of those. We got it. Then we're gonna take some of this Michigan cherry sauce I got going. Bring on it skillet. on. That looks great. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna dive right in here, is that okay? This looks amazing. Absolutely. This is a great grilled dessert. Refreshing, and the thing I love about the cherry sauce, it's not overly sweet, which I love. You know, you, get, you taste the tartness of the cherries with the balsamic and the, and the port, and then you get a little crunch with your beanie wafer. Mm -hmm. Way to bring it home. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Wow, is that good. I need a bucket of this. This is a great way to end some delicious andouille dishes. Thank you so much, Beef. You've been a great guest. Hey, thanks for having me. You can come back anytime. Just bring your grilled collard greens. All right, I'll be back tomorrow. All right, man. South Carolina. <laughs> that's where the food's at, baby.